when the discussion reduces to the experiential, when any discussion, I think, reduces to the experiential, you're more likely, I find, than in any other discussion to get derailed, I guess, or the discussion is more likely to get derailed, um, because you're kind of, you're dealing with axioms that are so, I won't say subjective, um, but they're so non-comparable, I guess. Um, and men have said that we can't, in this previous video, that we can't compare perspectives of pain, which is, I think, a reasonable thing to say. Um, or if we can compare perspective of, uh, perspectives of pain, we don't. We have no way of sort of evaluating them vis-a-vis -vis severity and stuff like that. We there's just it doesn't work like that. It doesn't seem to work like that. The experiential is by nature experiential. It's qualia. It's something that you can't really you can't dispute it. As I say, I take drugs and hallucinate, and okay. I didn't see anything that was really there, but I had the experience, and nobody can tell me I didn't, because I did. Um, I don't think people fully understand what illusions are in some in that sense, because illusions can leave their marks on your character, and powerful marks. Um, like if I was somehow to put somebody into artificial intelligence, or sorry, not artificial intelligence, put somebody into virtual reality where their nervous system and their sensory uh, apparatus is set up to completely or, and exactly replicate the experience of being in a torture chamber for a week and it never happened to them of course and then I take them take them take all the apparatus off them all the um, virtual reality stuff off them and then say okay don't worry that didn't happen to that torture victim well it, that is still left marks on that person that's my view of karma um, the effects of what you experience are real, whether or not the experience itself is real. The experience is real as well. Um, but we can't compare experiences. We're inside the car now. We're not looking out at the car from a second-person perspective. You get nasty um, derailments there, and you get nasty situations in which people are having the most basic fundamental axioms um, their most basic fundamental a axioms questioned and I find what you're doing ultimately when that happens um, I know where this is gonna go but and I apologize in advance and I hope that people will give me the benefit of the doubt but what I say is when you when you're but what I'll say is, and I'll just blurt it out there: when your most quest when your most precious axioms are being questioned, people get scared. Okay, your their universe is evaporating before their very eyes. Um, and this happens actually, as I say, in on both sides of this equation. When we're if we're going to crudely use terms like life denial and life affirmation, people are horrified by pure life affirmation. Um, they're horrified by embracing everything. They're saying, you're embracing Auschwitz. You're embracing the Spanish Inquisition. You're embracing all of that. In a sense, yes, that's true. <laughs> and, but we axiomatically, we take it that these things were bad. How can you do that? And, of course, this scares people. And, yeah, more yelling in the background, sorry. Um... And, and that came out when I was, when I was, or, or it seemed to come out when I was talking in the comment section of my previous video, or a couple of videos back with B. Quimby. It's just, I, 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 what can I say? It's just too, you're, what you're saying is too disturbing for me, or, or you're too far gone, or something like this. You can't just sort of see stuff that is so nakedly obvious that it's frightening. Now, by the same token, um, as I say, people see pure life affirmation that way. So I'm not saying that I'm off the hook in this regard. Um, people, it, it, it's almost understandable that each side will look at the other and say, you're, you're frightened of looking at ugly truths, aren't you? 
and all you, you end up at the end of the day is either finger pointing or let's agree to disagree. Because I, again, I don't see how we can how we can sort of reconcile the two apart from, I guess, some sort of negotiation based on interest. Uh, you're not, uh, you know, social contract type stuff. You're not going to get if you can, if you're so far apart in the most basic possible axioms. Um, you're going to have to start. You're going to have to either, you know, you're going to have to be a very resilient person, which both me and in Mendham are, I think, uh, and determined and dogged, uh, or you're going to have to just sort of write the other person off as a heretic or just beyond hope or, you know, lost to the world. And and then again in this discussion, you see both sides doing that. There's elements of that. Um, I'm as likely to do that as anybody else, but I'm attempting not to do that. Not an easy thing to do, by the way. Not an easy thing to do. So I understand that you know, you're going to get people that throw up their hands in frustration or even anger or whatever. I understand why people like B. Quimby get sort of bewildered by the arguments that I'm making. Um... And in other things, like some of the most basic things where you sort of think that things like natural selection are a done deal, like like the progression of time is a done deal. Well, no, I'm questioning both of those. I'm not sure that I agree with the common view of natural selection. I'm not sure that I agree with the common view of the progression of time. I'm not sure I agree with the common um, perception of the ultimate nature of death and the ultimate nature of consciousness. I'm not sure I agree with that. And it, it just gets frustrating because people start to sort of, every last, like you, you try and get a, a place to stand. You know, Archimedes, when he said, give me a place to stand and I'll move the universe, that works philosophically as well. You try, it, like People are just trying to get some basic things to agree upon, and I am refusing to do that. This is going to irritate people, or it's going to scare people, or it's going to frustrate people, or it's going to get people to just otherize you. That's going to happen. Okay, what can you do? Well, uh, what, it, what it, really, I have to say, what have I got invested in this? Is it that I want people to like and understand me, or that I want to actually own my own existence and my own mind? Um, Nietzsche had that famous quote about nothing is more important than owning yourself. You'll, you know, if you decide to separate yourself from the herd, you'll be frightened a lot of the time, and you'll be alone and uh, despised and everything, but nothing is more important than separating yourself. Nothing is more important than owning yourself. <coughs> and it's true. The eccentric will suffer for it. The an, an eccentric is... I would just contrast that to the concentric. The person who looks towards the center of the group, you know. Whereas the eccentric is the person who's at the margins of the center. The margin is away from the, the center of things. Away from you know, the heart of civilization or the heart of society. That person will be alone, will pay a heavy price. Uh, I remember a, a video made quite a while back by a fellow by the name of Mike Bowl, where he just came out and said, look, if you, if you don't like antinatalism, unsubscribe me right now. And to anyone who's going to come out and start discussing antinatalism on YouTube, you better understand People that you're going to lose friends. People are going to unsubscribe you. People are going to spit on you. Okay, that's just how it is. I can appreciate that. <clears throat> now, thing is, most of the people who actually are willing to entertain this debate, I think, are strong enough in a certain sense. Like a lot of people question our sanity. A lot of people question the sanity of somebody who's into tantra, or somebody will question the sanity of somebody who's an ethicist or something like this. Um, and you're going to have your sanity questioned, whereas I don't, I'm not even sure that I agree with the fundamental, uh, or the generally agreed upon definition of sanity. Um, <coughs> and speaking of that, and Mendham raised an interesting point where he says, we can't make a real good, or we can't, you know, Benatar is saying that we can't make a real good and the only thing is an absence of bad or whatever. And and I would, you know, it's just simple argument from ignorance. I've never perceived it. And this would explain a lot of the bewilderment that both sides feel. feel. I've never actually felt what it feels like to be so 
<clears throat> to have the opinion where you you see the view and su- uh, you see the universe in such a way as to make life not worth living. I'm not saying anyone is making this argument, but it does seem to hover around the margins of a lot of life denying philosophy. Again, life denying. <clears throat> now that's an argument from ignorance. Who said, you know, but but again, how do you how do you defeat an argument? How do you refute an argument from ignorance? Somebody says, well, show me then. Show me something that's as, that's as good on the plus side as having, you know, being strapped to a torture table, being horribly tortured. Just because I can't show it to you, or you don't, you're not equipped to perceive it or whatever, doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. That's, you know, ab- uh, evidence of absence, you know, argument from ignorance, that kind of thing. But by the same token, this just seems so abundantly obvious to the person that you're talking to that they have no means of, even if they want to understand what you're saying, they have no means of understanding you. Um, but And that works in both directions. As I say, Tantra is all about ecstasy. Have you ever looked into what they say you've got to do to find ecstasy? Try and explain that to somebody who isn't 100% receptive to it or hasn't studied it. They just say it's all insane. I, I understand that fully. Um, <clears throat> but again, you can sort of you, you can argue from ignorance, and, and Benatar can say that there is no counterpart to uh, extreme negative experience or exp- uh, extreme suffering. That's nice. Only may- maybe he hasn't experienced it. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I don't know what it's like to actually be tortured either, but I can use my imagination. Okay, but some people actually may not be able to actually grasp what that would feel like. Um, <clears throat> find somebody who's lived a perfect pampered existence all their life and they might not even want to consider something like that what does it actually feel like to be tortured oh that's not nice I don't want to think about it okay how are you going to get through that it's the same deal as um, somebody who can't zero in on the positives it doesn't mean that like th- there may be other reasons why they can't perceive it or whatever whatever, or why they've concluded that such a thing doesn't exist and they've concluded in a fundamental sense and that anything challenging that is simply not something that their mind is going to entertain and the same thing as I say this is this is not confined to either side uh, uh, both sides have a difficult uh, in the life denial affirmation thing have difficulty sort of accepting each other's basic premises um, <clears throat> now I'm afraid that I, you know, I would have to say that, okay, I understand that you say that there's only the removal of a deficit, and I'm going to say, with respect, I disagree. Now, the next step is, of course, prove it. I can't. Just because I can't prove it doesn't mean that it didn't happen. I can't prove that I didn't have an experience, or that I had an experience. Okay. Um, Okay, I just looked at this coat hanger sitting on the desk in front of me. Well, you can't see it because of the screwy... My camera's busted. It's dying. I'm not trying to experiment with neat new uh, graphics here. But, you know, I look at that coat hanger. <clears throat> now, how do I prove to somebody that I just looked at the coat hanger? Well, it's on a video camera, but let's just say that I turn the camera off, look at the coat hanger. How do I prove to somebody that I looked at that coat hanger or that I experienced that coat hanger? I can't. Nobody can prove that I didn't, though. Now what? We're talking about we're talking at the level of the experiential. What are you going to do at that level? The tiebreaker again. I hold to my contention that I think it's our moral system, our ethical system, which favors the victim right now. This is right out of on the genealogy of morals. I think that uh, that that has a great deal to do with it, and um, and that uh, that guilt unfortunately does play a huge part in that you just turn on turn on the TV and you're constantly um, that angle is constantly being played with your save the children ads on television juxtaposed with our perceived ultra prosperity and everything like that we have it so great they have it so bad really I don't think that we have it so great and you know and I have no way of knowing if whether or not they have it so bad because it's all at the first person experiential level and I have no way of comparing them and again in Mendon said we can't compare perspectives of pain or perspectives with pain okay and we can't do that either with pain's opposite or suffering's opposite now what we can extrapolate but everybody is going to again you're going to run up against that first person versus third person perspective logjam 
and I don't see how that can be overcome. I think it can be managed, but I don't see how it's going to be overcome. Again, I look at, say, India, and, and they've learned to kind of manage it, um, where the life affirmers or life deniers, like the life deniers, I would say, in, in India are generally, are, are decisively, I would say, in the majority. But their relationship, like the their, their relationship with the heterodox or the unorthodox or even the um, the esoteric or whatever is generally live and let live. Generally, um, neither side believes that it can that it can really defeat the other one. Um, and again, it's it's that thing about the Buddha and his message. You know, Mara says uh, to him, "What you're saying is right, but." Nobody's going to understand. Well, he said, some will understand. Well, what, what will prevent the other ones from understanding? Maybe they actually do disagree with it, and when they actually study it, it makes no sense to them. A little bit of a mishap there in the background. But um, it's um, his mother will look after him, don't worry. I'm not neglecting my son. Um, so, yeah, we have, we have a fundamental difference in perspectives here, and I'm recognizing that. Um, so you you have to sort of I think um, but it, but this is difficult though of course because some people are going to say that well what you're doing is is horrible and 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 damaging and the other side is going to just mirror the same objection right back to you now what like I can't see anything more fundamental than life denial versus life affirmation and each side say, each side may say and as Gary said in a couple of videos ago, each side may sincerely believe that the other one is something of a menace. All right, now what? I would say that that's a conflict that might be worth containing and managing because it's the kind of thing, the kind of fundamental conflict, which I think is the sort of thing that leads to war uh, or serious, serious clashes at the very least. Um, that's when you sort of start coming up with ideas of good and evil or stuff that is just simply anathematized um, simply bad and that's the kind of thing that I think is you know, likely to screw things up for us as a species I think far more than either denial or affirmation of existence is conflict of that fundamental nature that can't be managed and, and thus contained but I think I think that that conflict can be resolved simply by meeting each other's objections and nothing does that better than dialogue not necessarily debate but dialogue